Okay. Welcome to the World of John. Today Rufus is joining me because we have a question, don't we? What's that question? Oh, yes. Is it a rumor or is it a fact that there is many elderly people out there who is eating pet food because they can't afford anything else? So do you think that's true? Huh? He thinks it's true. Now, I don't know if it is or not, but I'm going to tell you what. I know I've seen probably at least five, six different times in different areas when I would stop in a store to pick up something, other run I'm traveling or at home or whatever. And um, I would see an old poor woman in front of me. It seemed like it was always an old woman for some reason or another, a mature lady, uh, you know, in their upper years. And all I seen was cat food. Nothing else. This one little old lady, and she always stuck kind of out of my mind because she was the most recent. I know she had to be in her 80s. I guarantee you had to be 20 or 30 cans of cat food there. There was not one thing for her, personally, as far as food went. And it made me kind of wonder, you know, okay. You know, and that does make you wonder. When you get behind someone of uh, upper years who's retired, who are, is living off their husband's social security or whatever it is, if they're eating it or not, because you hear the stories, you know, this Rufus. Okay. Rufus says it's because the food is cheaper than buying people food. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. He likes a particular dog food brand that I give him time time as a treat. And it's like regular size can, you know, like a size of, of beans you buy. And yes, yes, I know I'm telling that probably is less than a dollar. I think it, I gave like 70 cents for it or something like that. And if you get the cheaper one, it's what, about 50 cents, ain't it? Something like that. So you think about it. They get a can of this dog food that's got meat in it, whether it's horse meat or whatever is left over in there, compared to a can that's got canned meat in it to paying three or four or five dollars to it. Yes, I will let you down. You can go visit. Okay. So, you know, just like Rufus said, his food is a whole lot cheaper. I can buy him and boo a cheap 20 pound bag of dog food for five dollars, made of cereal and all this other byproducts. I can buy him and boo, like he said, I can buy him a bag of chewies, well, as we call them, little snacks for, you know, maybe a dollar or two. And if I bought a bag of beef jerky, that beef jerky is going to run me three dollars or more. Depends on how big of a bag. And then I'm getting a whole lot less. I might get five ounces for three dollars and something compared to getting uh, a pound of um, chewies for them. The truth is what? I mean, not everyone is lucky enough to have a, a family to fall back on. My mom, when she retired, was only getting $545 a month. Now, that's nothing. Nothing by cost of living standards is it's going up every day. Now, she's lucky. She's My dad's still alive. So, you know, he's got his Social Security coming in. And their home was paid for. But what if, what if uh, that wasn't the case? You know, what if she didn't have someone to fall back on? What has happened to a lot of them, especially in some of the larger cities and things like that, uh, many of them outlived their spouse, and many of them actually outlived their children because they lost a lot of their, their children and even their spouse to uh, to war and to sickness. You know, you got to realize that medicine has progressed a whole lot in the last 40 or 50 years compared to the way it used to be. You know, these are... Uh, down in Kentucky, the Mammoth Cave that's known for 400 something miles or so, and they're still finding more. They, for tuberculosis, they had them living down in there for months at a time and treating them down there because it was considered contagious. So you gotta realize a lot of this stuff has uh, only recently kind of progressed in the last 40 or 50 years. You gotta remember too that the war, uh, World War II and World War One took the toll on many of the, of the soldiers that he had the career war behind. And it's a shame because we're over here, go, we're going to war over some things that 
shouldn't even be happening, but it does. So these people are outliving their spouses and outliving their children, and they're by themselves. So now they go to the doctor, and they got to buy the medications. Well, you know, used to the government paid the whole insurance thing, but that's not the case anymore. They have to pay for part of it, so there goes more of their uh, Social Security check. If they do get food stamps, it's, it's not necessary very much because uh, they go by your income, what you're bringing in, and on top of that, they're cutting food stamps. I helped just one lady one day, and uh, she managed to get, you know, SSI, and she was using a walking stick. She was crippled, you know, was unable to work, but she was only getting $7 a month in food stamps. That's all she qualified for. Well, you know, $7 isn't going to get you very far. So, but, you know, that's all she was going to, that's all she could do. And, you know, she could barely stand. So, that's a shame right there. Plus all the medicines. There was one lady we was talking to. Uh, her family, her, she had five kids. She never really worked. But her five kids bought her medicine because it, she couldn't afford it. So, she finally got SSI. And then her food stamps was very little as well. So, you know, and it's a shame that. We're cutting all this down. Now, my mom, she uh, was in the military. And of course, back in the 50s, they forced them to get out of the, the military when they became pregnant. You know, you know, her and my so-called birth dad was both in the military. She was once a month going down and getting uh, food for that was qualified to veterans. Well, then they cut the food program out here a few years ago because... Budget cuts and stuff, so, you know, and it's a shame because you're taking all this stuff away from these people who's retired who can barely survive. So, what are they eating cat food? Are they eating dog food? Are they eating the, the snacks and the chewies and stuff? Are they eating the big bags of dry dog food because this is all they can afford by the time uh, they pay uh, their medical bills, by the time they're having to pay rent to wherever they're living at? You know, some of the places these these retired people are forced to live in are really very, not very good shape. Of course, some of them, you know, lived there for years and years. Of course, you got to realize in these very much larger cities, uh, very few of them actually owned a home. Most of them spent their life living in the same apartment 30, 40, 50 years. So they was under this set uh, agreement or rent control. But even so, by the time they do all this, you know, most of their money's gone because... The, you know, paying the lights and the water and, and your medications and stuff. And, and they will turn around and buy their medicines before they will eat. So, you know, they depend on, you know, the food wagon coming around. But even so, what if uh, what if they fall through the cracks and they're not getting the help? Maybe they're just not physically able to get down there and get to the food stamps office and take care of themselves and try to get all this filled out. You know, they, they're just lost in the cracks, unfortunately. So... So here they are, you know, so is it true? Is it a rumor? Is it a fact? Are many of these retired people who uh, are out there with their pride and stuff not letting anybody really know, are they, this, when you see someone in line in front of you, in front of you and you see no food, but cat food or dog food or, or whatever, think about it. Just kind of wonder, you know, is this, is this person eating this stuff? Why? You know, if I go in a store and if I get something for my animals, I'm always getting something for me. I mean, that's just natural. I might go in there and get a bag of dog food or a bag of cat food. But I'm not going to go in there and buy 30 cans of uh, cat food or, or 20 cans of dog food and not buy me some stuff for me to eat on because I like to eat. You know, I mean, I'm struggling, but shoot, you know, I'm going to fit. I live on a Roman noodle diet if I have to, but I'm going to eat something. I mean, there's going to be food up there for me. And if I'm struggling, my animals are going to have to struggle right along with me. So, I went from getting a better quality of dog food to a cheaper quality of dog food because I just don't have the money to be spending out right now. So that is the same situation a lot of these retired people are in. Unfortunately, they, uh, they're they still living in the same place they was living in for years, especially, in these, I say, in these larger cities. They just can't afford it. So I think it's a very distinct possibility. Yes, it could be rumor. But I think it could be very much so fact that even though we as a people may live better in many ways, uh, programs are getting cut. You know, food stamps are getting cut. Services are getting cut. You know, some of these uh, 
mill on wheel programs are getting cut because they're just saying, well, we don't have the money or we don't have the volunteers or whatever the reasons. So, and then like I say a lot of them, they lost their, their, they outlived their spouse and they lost their children due to sickness or war. You know, it's, it's a sad thing that so many of them has, has outlived. You know, I outlived one of my children and he, he died due to an accident. It breaks my heart that I lost him because, you know, I want, wanted him to be around and enjoy spending time with me and enjoy, you know, my life with me. But he's not here. You know, he's in my heart every day, but I outlived him, unfortunately, you know. And he's been gone for many, many years now. I lost him in 2001, and, and it breaks my heart that I lost my child because he was a good son. So think about it. Is As a society, are we letting the retired people down? Are we letting these people down? by not taking care of them like we should be. Are uh, they being forced to buy this cat food and dog food and, and eat on it because this is all they can food for it. Next time you go into the store, I want you to just go in the store and you go over to the food section and you take a mental note or you can write it down if you want to as far as that goes and t look at the, the food, pull it up and look at it. It'll say horse meat or what's come out say horse meat, but it'll say it's got meat in it and this in it and this and that and that. And it's no different than going to the frozen food section and all the byproducts, but geared up psychologically, we're not going to eat it. We don't want to eat that stuff. We're like, oh, that's disgusting. You know, how can my animals eat that? But I will tell you what, if you're hungry, you're going to eat it. So you look at it and say that can, large can of dog food is 70 cents. And you find a couple of small cans of cat food, and they're like anywhere from quarter to 50 or 60 cents each. Then you go over to the food section. And you're taking a look at a uh, a large can of chili or with meat in it, or a large can of uh, pig's feet or whatever it is, you know. Look in the canned meat section and how much more it costs. A can of tuna can run uh, 50 something cents on up. I mean, it's just if you get a can, if you ever got the generic brand tuna and you're paying 50 cents, when you open it up, you're getting a whole lot of water in it. You're not getting really the packed tuna, the higher price when it's packed. So, you know, just think about it. Are they? Are they eating cat food and dog food? Is it a rumor? Or is it a fact? Just think about it. Are we as a people, our country, are we letting the retired people down by not taking care of them? So from the world of Joe, be safe, be happy. Bless y'all, and I hope none of you happy end up like those, some of these people we think might be living like that. Let's hope you've got family to fall back on and friends.